Hi, what kind of book do you want to write today? So um, today we're at Barnes & Noble to look at books that are cookbooks. There's a lot of people, a few people in the Publisher in Your Pocket Facebook group who are interested in writing cookbooks. But each person's cookbook is a different kind of cookbook that they're interested in, um, the, the people that I'm thinking of. So we're going to come and look at cookbooks, look at the publishers of the cookbooks that I find. There's a lot of cookbooks here, so we're not going to look at all of them because there's quite a few. As with any genre, there's going to be a lot of, of those books. One of the things I want to point out is that cookbooks are generally printed overseas. So China, India, Korea, that's where... Um, a lot of books are printed, not just cookbooks, but the reason cookbooks are going to be printed overseas is because the cookbooks have um, a lot of imagery, a lot of photos in them, and a lot of design, and it's less expensive to print them overseas and ship them to the United States than it is to print them in the United States. So when you're a self-publisher, and you're thinking about, oh, I'm going to publish a cookbook. You can publish it. The technology is there to do print-on-demand cookbooks, but it's more expensive, and it's more expensive than printing them overseas, and it's it's also more expensive than printing them in the United States. So I want to put that out there for those of you that are interested in self-publishing. There are a lot of traditional publishers who do publish cookbooks. As with any other book, you need a good hook. You need a good reason for this particular cookbook. It can't just be a collection of your best recipes because there are a lot of cookbooks. Cookbooks are very competitive so it needs to be targeted and niche um, just like any other kind of book you want to have it to a very specific reader. So we're going to go in and look at the cookbooks, look at how they're designed, sizes, page counts, prices, um, see if any have Headbands. Remember, we talked about headbands uh, last week. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. If there's something that you're interested in when it comes to cookbooks that I don't cover in this video, please comment below. Let me know. And uh, thank you for watching. So let's get inside. All right, here we are in cooking. So cookbooks are fun to look at if you really like book design. Because you can do all sorts of things in a cookbook because you're already um, really all in on the design. And they're being printed overseas. Um, but one thing I want to point out, okay, so I've been saying the word wrong. This kind of cover is case-bound laminate, all right? So that's just a hard cover or hard back, same word. This is dust jacketed, all right? That's a dust jacketed cover. And then this part is still the case-bound laminate. We used to really like dust jackets, and now we're moving more towards case-bound laminate in all sorts of genres. Now, within cookbooks, case-bound laminate makes a little more sense because you're in the kitchen using it, and you don't want to worry about a dust jacket. But a dust jacket is also helpful to protect the cover underneath, so you can go either way. Another fun thing about looking at these cookbooks is the interior. So look at how much design we have just on the end pages. For these. This one I opened up a minute ago and that's really fun with all the oysters. This pie cookbook. All sorts of uh, images of pies, I guess. Um, so design is often a big part of cookbooks. And if you also notice, celebrity is a big part of cookbooks or well-known names. So um, that's another thing that helps sell cookbooks. These were here at Christmas time. I saw them. Um, so again, good housekeeping, Joy of Cooking is a classic, and actually I read recently that the Joy of Cooking, the original Joy of Cooking, was self-published. And this is the cookbook I have, not this particular one, I'll have to see if I can dig out my paperback that is actually split in two, because I've had it for about 30 years. So um, I'm sure this version has way more than the original. Cookbooks can be very or, uh, very designed or not. You can go all out like this one probably does. I'm not going to open it. It's um, shrink wrap, but it's big. It's got a dust jacket. It's thick. French Laundry is a famous restaurant, I believe, out in California. Or you can be like this. So you've got more uh, basic paperback, okay? So we won't look at the insides just yet. I just want to point out something about, <laughs> these are all kind of stuffed in here. 
Um, you know, then we've got this, where this is actually a spiral bound cookbook with a spine. And I know a lot of people I've talked to recently, they want a spiral bound book. Spiral bound books don't look good, spine out. And bookstores don't like spiral bound. So this is an option, but it's not cheap to do that kind of binding. Or we can go into a tiny, all right, we've got tiny, small card covers. Um, again, Moosewood is a restaurant, and so this is a very nicely designed, feels good, a very thick cover. Um, these really big ones, this um, America the Great Cookbook, I'm not even sure who that's from, but I'm sure it's something, I mean, that's very well designed. You've got embossed uh, titles and letters and authors here. The chopped cookbook. This is actually a little more basic than some of these others. So, um, 30 minute cooking for two. Again, more basic paperback, not too fancy as cookbooks go. And then we do also have really teeny tiny, like teeny tiny ones, okay, by cookbooks. Some of these are by gift publishers. Again, here we have some more spiral down, all right? So they lay flat, but they have this um, spine that you can read the spine. So that's a plus. Then we have, this is very different. So these are like kids' board books, basically. This particular, this is like a board book, all right? But it kind of makes sense in a kitchen because it's gonna be, you know, around food and stuff but that's even another kind of way to um, design a cookbook. And then we also have a classic here, the Fanny Farmer cookbook, which probably comes in all sorts of different editions, but this is the mass market edition. And look how many, look how thick it is. Um, mass market's gonna be a less expensive um, book to buy. This is $11.99, which is a very good price for a book this thick. We're looking at how many pages? 1,230 pages. <laughs> so, um, you know, tiny type, but still legible. This is about the size type of my joy of cooking at home, which is a little bit bigger trim size. But this is a mass market like you would get, you know, all sorts of fiction books are in mass market. There's not a lot of mass market, but this is a classic. And that's generally, you're gonna see mass uh, classic cookbooks that have been around for a long time in that mass market. Like here, we're in diet and nutrition right next to it. Here's another mass market, which has been around for a very long time. Much uh, cheaper here, uh, $7.99. So. so looking at the design of cookbooks, I found a smallish one. Um, it's actually the pleasures of cooking for one. Um, I like the topic and I know someone who this might be appropriate for as a model. Remember I say find a book that's a model for the kind of book you want to do. And um, so anyway, I know someone who this could be a model for them. And Judith Jones actually is, she's an editor who's worked with Julia Child and James Beard. So she's got some name recognition, not to the general cook, but to people in the industry. So this is a hardcover um, book. $29.95 and it's by Knopf, so one of the bigger publishers. And I want to point out that, so it's nicely designed, it's got color, it's got these, you know, the pages with the yellow and the green, it's got some sidebars, and then you see the recipes in here, and not every single recipe has a photo. So some cookbooks have lots of photos, but this is an example of a cookbook that does not have a lot of photos. So this is really about the food and the recipes. It's nicely done. It's a good package. It's a nice gift. It's useful in the kitchen. It will stay open, okay? So you don't have to have a spiral bind for the book to stay open. So this is a, a nice package. And I don't believe it's six by nine. In fact, let's, um, let's measure it and find out. Here's my trusty um, measuring. Tape and it's six and a half by eight and a half, so not quite six by nine. And let's see how many pages it is. 273 pages. So um, 
we'd have to go through and count the recipes, but a good, good collection of recipes in here. All right, now we have the simple kitchen. It looks actually like a square book, but it's not. I just measured it and it's eight by nine. It is paperback. And what do you notice right away? Okay, pictures on every single page, recipe picture on every page. And a lot of cooks like that. They wanna see what the recipe is gonna look like. So that's more common than not. Uh, also more expensive. Um, also take a look at the rest of the design. So you've got some nice color, easy to read, the layout is easy, um, but you're gonna have to look at the, the, the recipe title, you've got some description, you've got the ingredients, the instructions, and then maybe a little tip or something extra. All right, so well, those look good. Um, everything in here looks good. So uh, yeah, the pictures are very important in a cookbook when you have them. Okay, so just keep that thought in mind. $21.99, I had to look up Page Street Publishing, which is actually an imprint of a larger publisher. So um, I was thinking this might be a self-published or independent published book, but it's not. All right, the Book Lovers Cookbook caught my eye because it's book lovers, haha. -ha. Okay, right, recipes inspired by celebrated works of literature and the passages that feature them. So that looks like a fun book. This would be a really cool gift if you have people that like to read um, in general. So like for me, <laughs> um, someone you know. Um, so what's interesting about this, it's six and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So it's not a six by nine, paperback, $18. It is by the Reader's Circle. So we'll have to look and see bookloverscookbook.com and see if we can find out. Um, it's got a reader's guide. And now in here, so we have Mr. Wonka's cookbook, Carolyn Augusta's toffee hazelnut bars, ginger snaps, cookies. What do you notice right away? It is black and white. There are no photos of any recipes or dishes, but you don't, I mean, that's not what this is about. This is about reading and books and so, the recipes are important, but it's not a celebration of the pictures. So you do not have to have pictures in a cookbook. That's my point. You do not have to have pictures in a cookbook. All right. Um, I don't see a whole lot of excerpts, which is what I expected to see. Okay, maybe that's an excerpt. There's Robert Frost, Oscar Wilde. Um, there's some very small that's not even an excerpt that's a quote from Judy Bloom I guess I thought there would be all right here's Pippi Longstocking muffins cakes and scones okay so there's there's kind of small excerpts but not as much as I expected here's an excerpt from something by Andrew and Andy they're saying Andrew Rooney but I'm thinking Andy Rooney I don't know um, about zucchini so interesting okay so uh yeah this is a very um okay <laughs> turkish delight who has never who has always wondered what is turkish delight from the line in the witch in the wardrobe right it only recently did i learn that turkish delight is like a candy i don't know what i thought it was when edmund was in with the witch eating turkish delight but let's see what it is gelatin cold water orange juice lemon juice all right, and powdered sugar. So it's it's definitely a candy. All right. So I'm curious who the publisher is of this one. Valentine Book. All right, so by Random House. So yeah, so a big publisher. Uh, yeah, but that's kind of a fun book but that just gives you kind of a range of things when it comes to book. I found something fun. Remember we saw the kids' book um, a couple weeks ago that was from the office? So here's the office official party planning guide to planning parties. <laughs> okay, and so this is definitely, you've got the case laminate, right? You've got a nice interior, nice design, lots and lots of design and photos and fun and yeah, how cool. So I thought, okay, this is NBC and the big pub, right? But it's not, it is actually, credits page in the back interestingly inside editions i'll have to look them up but uh universal not nbc 
So this is interesting. So we'll have to see if someone owns Insight. Um, I'm guessing they do. So we'll look it up and find out. And I just wanted to share that real quick before the bookseller came over and started banging books around again. I looked them up. Inside Editions is actually not owned by a publisher. They're probably a book packager. They do a lot of gift books and well-designed books. And we'll talk more about book packagers another time. But I wanted to show you the headband. Oh, come on, you can... No, it doesn't want to focus. There we go. So there's the headband, yellow, which goes with the color on the book, right? And footband. So that's fun. And actually, if we look here, these are some um, licensed books. So we've got Star Wars, we've got a black headband, Destiny, the official cookbook with a yellow headband, which kind of stands out. So they do that on purpose. I guess there's a little yellow here. All right, then here's one with some red, red rooster. So of course we're gonna have a red headband. All right, these are fun. This one's black, you can barely see it. Fifty Shades of Chicken has a little gray headband, because why not? The Little House Cookbook. Oh, how fun! All right, and they have one of the checkered, and it kind of goes with the, the colors of the blue. And a couple other cookbooks. I had to move away from the cookbook section. There was a bookseller who kept, I guess I was bothering him. He wanted to shelve books very loudly. <laughs> or something. Okay, fast and easy vegan cookbook. So I wanted to pull this one because again, it's paperback. And this is if you're gonna go a little more basic. I know it still looks very well designed, but there's things they've done here to save money. So the paperback, it's a, a matte binding, but also what um, I've found, and it's $14.99, which is a very good price. So fast and easy vegan, 100 mouthwatering recipes, time crunched vegans, good keywords in the title. We know exactly who this is for. We're not trying to get everybody, right? So it's going to get attention. And it is, see if you notice. Aha, print on demand. Really nice. This end piece here, that's cool. They did a really good job for a print on demand. Um, so JL Fields is the author. She's got a website, Facebook, Instagram. So that's a lot of what happens now. A lot of people that are publishing books have followings because social media is important. Um, so what else I notice is this is, oh, it is four color. Okay, I was gonna say two color because of the green and the black, but there's also the orange in here. So it is in color. So if you're doing the print on demand, two color is actually four color when it comes to print on demand. Nice design here, but what else do you notice about? So lots of color. Not a lot of photos, but here we go. Here's a photo of a recipe. So here's another cookbook where you don't need a whole lot of photos of the recipes to still have a great cookbook. So she's done a really good job. So that's that's really cool to see. Um, let's make sure, so she's got a little bit of instructions in the beginning. So this is a good model if you want to do your own self-published uh, or print-on-demand cookbook. And Yes, credit page is in the back. Okay, not a copyright page in here. Um, would like a copyright page. I guess technically, well, here it is. Here it is. It just looks a lot different. A lot of words. So, okay. So that's one. And then this one also is, interestingly, I was actually surprised to see also print on demand. So here is this case laminate cover, right? Because print on demand, I think you can do dust jacket, but it's much more expensive. Um, one of the things that happens with the print on demand is these lines can get a little um, crooked sometimes, not crooked, but off. So if they could have made this all the same color, that would have been nice, because that kind of gets shifted a little bit. Uh, so we don't have the price on here. That that does happen, I've noticed, with print on demand, which um, can be frustrating for the buyer. Here's our credit page and contents page, just a complete listing of all the recipes. So you don't have to do that. They could have just said pasta, snacks, main dishes in the table of contents, and then included these in the index. Now. They've got a lot of text, but you're really not here for the text. This is definitely 
you are here for the recipes. You've got a crock pot and you want to know what to do with it. And this has a lot of recipes. Another thing I wanted to say about this one is that it's um, the publisher is um, Rock Ridge Press. And I looked them up and I'm having trouble finding them. So I think this is a self-published book. So good job getting it into a chain store. And most likely it's because it's niche. It's vegan, time crunch, 100. So it's got good placement. Now we have a self-published or print on demand at least hardcover book in this bookstore. So that's also, so there it is, print on demand. And this is the case laminate, all right? A um, couple of things to notice about this. Great cover, it's a little busy, but that's okay. Um, it, again, is also very niche and targeted, so crock pot. Uh, so everybody's into crock pot cooking. A thousand and one recipes, so it's got a lot of recipes, especially for this page count. So let's see what the page count is. There is no price on it, which is, you know, kind of a frustration. Thankfully, they have page numbers, 249 pages. And then in this one, again, this is all about the recipes. And these are actually, you've got multiple recipes per page. So that is something you can do. Think about the relation, the experience for the reader and if this is something that the reader is fine with. Um, but that isn't what's often done on a cookbook. So you gotta weigh the consequence, you know, weigh your options because if they did one recipe per page, that's a thousand pages and obviously they can't do that. So they could either do fewer recipes or they can bunch them all up like this. So, you know, that's the decision they made, but you could do a series. You wouldn't have to do them all in one cookbook if you wanted. So again, just different options that you have. Um, they do have it separated into different types of recipes, soups and stews, beans, that kind of thing. Another thing I noticed was in the table of contents, they list every single recipe. You don't have to do that. You can just say the, gen the general, you know, main dishes, pasta, snacks, and then people go to that section to find those recipes. So you don't have to list them all, especially given that they also list them all in the back in the index. So let's see if I can show that with my left hand without irritating everybody. So yeah, here we go. So again, all the recipes are listed in the back as well. So um, that is another option if you want to self-publish your cookbook. And again, the reason it got into a bookstore is because it's so targeted and niche. If y'all don't mind, I wanted to show one more kind of cookbook Again, knowing what some of the people that I'm working with that they want to do. So, The Roads to Rome. This is a cookbook that is an experience for the reader, okay? Oh, that's cool. It's, um, the letters are a little bit raised. So, this is the case laminate, and let's see, it's quite large, $40, hardcover. This is pretty on the inside, this eggplant gray. I'm not sure if that's a gray or a purple color. But when you look through here, definitely lots of photos and not of the recipes, okay? This is photos of food. Hold on. These are lifestyle photos. So photos of food, of people, of the, the people in the book or, you know, just other people, I don't know. <laughs> okay, making the food, here's the ingredients, here's it finished. This is an experience and it's actually put uh, recipes in Rome following the four roads, okay? So, north, south, east, and west. So this is a, you've got lots of stories of the people, you've got the history, and the recipes. So this is a whole overall experience. This is not just about the recipes. This is about the cookbook. This is for, this is a gift, this is a coffee table. When you say coffee table cookbook, this is what people are thinking about. So this is highly designed, highly photographed, um, definitely expensive to produce. Let's see who the publisher is. This has got lots of story. Lots of introduction. Clarkson Potter. Okay, so Clarkson Potter is very heavy on design. They're a publisher that does a lot of these 
very nicely designed books. They're also a division now of Penguin Random House. Um, not sure that they always were, but they are now. So uh, it's not a surprise. Let's see if they have the, I'm surprised this isn't more designed here, but it does have, have this. Let's see if they have a headband. Oh, yep, a nice purple. So the purple headband that kind of complements the cover of the book. I'm surprised there's not a ribbon. That would be the only touch that you would want to add. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, that's definitely, you know, the top of the line cookbook or getting there. Okay, well, we saw a lot of cookbooks, a lot of different kinds of cookbooks, and we kind of saw the range of how to design a cookbook if you're going to do one yourself or if you are working with a publisher and there's a lot of different options of how your cookbook can be designed so there's definitely hardcover is popular in cookbooks most of the book cookbooks are going to be hardcover because that's more durable but you don't have to have hardcover we saw plenty of paperbacks as well there are cookbooks like that last one we looked at about rome that are a complete experience for the reader there's more than just recipes. There's these stories and this history and these photos. In fact, it's really not about the recipes. Um, I, we didn't look this time, maybe another time we can. There are actually recipes in other types of books. There's novels that have recipes. I saw um, a biography that had recipes. So there are other books that have recipes in them, but today we're talking about cookbooks, so we won't get sidetracked on that. So. Um, yeah, so lots of design, lots of color, lots of um, photographs, but you don't have to have the photographs. You don't have to have color even, though color's nice. Um, but it does cost more if you're doing print on demand. Color is definitely more expensive to produce than black and white. Hardcover is more expensive to produce than paperback. So it kind of just depends on the cookbook that you're, that you're doing. If you have a, a large following, a lot of bloggers right now, um, and lifestyle and influencers, all those people, they are able to um, either get book deals with publishers or publish their own books. We saw one that was self-published through um, a self-publishing company. I'm not quite sure what, what that company is, but um, that's one path. Or if you're gonna be, you can do hybrid. I'll have to do some research to see if hybrid publishers are doing cookbooks. I'm not sure. It hasn't like come on my radar. So I'd have to look that up and see. I Probably. Everybody's trying to do cookbooks. <laughs> um, celebrities, obviously celebrities get cookbook deals a lot. And we see a lot of that. And then um, there's the classics. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned in the earlier, earlier in the video, but Joy of Cooking was self-published long, long, long ago in the 40s or 50s. And... Um, We'll have to look that up on Google just to see, but I'm pretty sure that's what I read recently. And uh, yeah, so lots of different ways to to do a cookbook. I thought it was fun that the office, so they're licensing, it'd be kind of interesting to, to see where else we're gonna find books that have the office in the title or that are about the office or spinoffs of the office. We saw children's books. You don't normally think of television shows into children's books. You don't think of television shows into cooking and entertaining. But why not? Because having office parties was kind of a, a, a key thing that happened at the office in the, in the show. So that's kind of fun. And um, yeah, again, the only thing I want to point out is the more specific you can be about your cookbook, the better when it comes to sales. So if it's not a personality, if it's not a website with a following, uh, then specific cooking uh, recipes for one vegan people that are time crunched vegans even more specific uh, crock pot you could get even more specific with the crock pot um, so that's kind of important when you are thinking about marketing your cookbook is the, the the keywords the market the readers who it's going to go to because as as anybody who's ever listened to an editor or a book publisher knows no book is written for everybody. If you write it for everybody, you will find it will not be for anybody. Nobody will want it. So you need to find a core readership, a core audience. And even in cookbooks, you need to because there's so many of them. Think about it. If you want to go find a cookbook, you're like, I don't know what I want. Uh, you know, especially if you don't have food preferences, then you are open to everything. So you need to you also, most people that are buying cookbooks are buying them 
with certain food preferences in mind. Oh, I'm a college student and I want things that are easy. Or, oh, I'm entertaining. I have family coming over. I need an entertainment. Or I'm throwing parties. I need an entertainment book. Um, the office one is obviously more of a gift for people who are fans of the office or want to do office parties because it had real office party stuff in it. So it's not like it's fake stuff. It's stuff you can really use. So um, think about how you buy. You are a target audience for someone. So if you're doing a book, there's target people out there for you. So I won't harp on that too long. But um, yeah, fun, fun to look at the headbands and see the different colors and how they complement or interact with the books. I would have looked at more, but I'm I'm sorry, I'm trying not to complain about somebody doing their job. It's very hard. I have worked in a bookstore trying to shelve. It is hard to shelve when there are people in the way. And um, cookbooks are heavy, so they, he was banging them around because they're heavy, I'm sure. Um, not to bother me. So I apologize for my whininess in there. Um, but anyway, yeah. So let me know what you thought of the cookbooks. Are there specific cookbooks? Like what cookbooks do you buy? Or if you are writing a cookbook or you want to someday write a cookbook, tell me in the comments what kind of cookbook do you want to do? And we'll see if we can find one like it in a bookstore. Because again, bookstores aren't the only place people buy cookbooks. They buy them online. They buy them on uh, all the uh, online retailers. They buy them from websites. Uh, you can get cookbooks in a lot of different places now. So uh, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Uh, please do, you know, do the bell and the ringer and all the good stuff uh, to follow because uh, there will be videos weekly now that we're on YouTube. And um, we will uh, see what we find next week.